Wait, 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 but like, what tools do I use? Hey everyone, it's design gal Christine Maji. I got tons of questions from you guys about what tools you should be using for UI and UX, and I am going to address those questions now. This video in particular, I'm covering UI tools for 2018, and I hope to be able to update this year by year. New tools are coming out all the time, and I love looking at new tools, so I expect to have some new ones next year. But for now, these are ones that I recommend, that I personally use, or that are very popular in the market. So here we go. When I talk about these tools for UI, I mean tools that help you do everything from very low fidelity, so like paper pencil, all the way to high fidelity, pixel perfect, beautiful designs. So the first one, I already gave it away, it's pen and paper. I don't think these will ever go away, and I think you should definitely still use a pen and a paper. I like to use a Sharpie in a sketchbook. Pen and paper are really great tools for getting out initial sketches before you spend all kinds of time doing something that you're not even sure is gonna work. Just drawing it out quickly on paper is the best thing you can do. I'm not the best drawer, but to be a designer, you actually don't have to be. You just need to be able to sketch out your ideas so that you know what you're talking about when you look at it again and flesh that idea out further. So don't be afraid of pen and paper. They are wonderful tools, use them. The next tool is probably the most common design tool used today for everything from wireframing to high fidelity designs, and that is Sketch. So back in the day, the only tools we had really were the Adobe Creative Library, which was Illustrator, InDesign, Photoshop. And while these tools are great and I still use them for what they were built for, they were not built for UI design. So these newer tools and Sketch in particular that are made for UI design are just so efficient. They're so good to use for it. I switched from Photoshop to Sketch a couple years ago. I have not looked back since. I love love, love Sketch. That said, there are new tools coming out that we're sort of waiting to see if they're going to be the Sketch Killer or not. That remains to be seen for now. In June 2018, Sketch is still the best for production-ready work, in my opinion. There are other tools out there you can use, though. Figma is a good one that is definitely getting some traction, getting some attention. It has some benefits over Sketch, actually, in that it's browser-based, so you can actually collaborate online with your team while you're designing, which you cannot do that in Sketch currently. And Adobe XD, actually. So Adobe realized that they needed a tool to compete that was built for UI design in particular, and so XD is their answer for that. I did just learn that they're offering a sort of free package to use XD. So if you can't afford Sketch, I think Figma is free too, at least for now. Check out Figma, check out Adobe XD. You can still use them for design, there's professionals that use these programs all over the world. They're very good. Another great tool that's extremely popular is Envision. Now, while you can't directly design in Envision, you can actually import your designs from these other tools into Envision and sort of use it as a way to prototype your ideas. So stringing different screen designs together and making it a clickable prototype so you can test your ideas out. Super useful for user testing. They also have a really great tool within Envision called Inspect, I believe, which is actually a really great way to hand off your design to a developer. It gives them the code, the hex colors, the padding, the margins, everything right there for your developers. So it's a really great tool. Zeppelin as well for developer designer handoff. I've used both, they both work great. Love Envision, love Zeppelin. Now one of those tools that could be the sketch killer that I mentioned um, is actually brought to you by Envision and it's called Envision Studio. And they are sort of managing to combine the power of sketch with the ability to add motion and micro interactions to your design, which could be super powerful. It could overtake Sketch at some point. I did get to play with a beta version of it. I don't think it's ready to use for production at this point, but I expect in 2019, I might say something differently. We will see. Another great tool I love to use is called UX Pin, and specifically for wireframing, it's just so efficient, it's so easy to use. It's got a drag and drop interface where I can drag a video element, I can drag a form element right onto the page. I don't have to spend time just creating those elements by hand like I would in Sketch. So for quick wireframes, quick prototypes, 
UX pin is my absolute favorite tool. A couple other tools you might hear about if you want to do more of the motion design, the animation, the micro interactions. So for example, I hit a button and something moves off the screen or it grows bigger or smaller or it does a really delightful, cutesy animation. Tools like Framer, Principle, and Marvel. I don't have personal experience using any of them myself, but it's something that I hope to be learning soon and get my hands wet in and I'll be able to give you a more definite answer on which one I personally recommend. I do know that Framer is sort of the top tier, like most robust tool for animation, but the learning curve is a little high because you actually have to know some JavaScript and there's more coding involved. But I think principle is sort of the next step down in terms of abilities and ramp up time to learn the tool. If you just wanna do a simple prototype that's you're clicking something and goes to a new page, Envision's great for that, super easy to use, hardly any learning curve there. So those are my recommendations for tools for UI in 2018. Check back next year, I'll have another one. This video is part of my series on getting started in UI UX or product design. I did get a lot of questions about tools to use and I hope this was helpful for you. Stay tuned for the next one. I'm gonna cover tools for UX specifically. Leave any questions or comments you have down below. Subscribe to this channel if you want more videos like this and I will see you next time.